Don't play the sweet little virgin with me. Open the door. Open the door, I'll have you. Is he in some danger? I'm going to be everything you could have been, father, dear, and more. And no woman is ever going to get in my way. and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition. But someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. Is there any juice? Mm. On the table. Help yourself. You had a row with your grandmother. Thought she wouldn't be able to cope with a teenager in the house. She's all right. Well, it was your choice. Anyway, it was nice having you here last night. This place hasn't been the same without you. Without my miss, you mean? <laughs> now that you mention it. How's school? Chelsea? I want to leave. Oh, no, you're not leaving school. Mum, I'm not going back. It's so boring, and honestly, they don't teach you anything. Or you don't learn anything. Anyway, it's too late now. I haven't got a hope of getting sixth form certificate. It's not just an exam, you know. It's based on the whole year, and I haven't been. Well, you've got a lot of catching up to do then, haven't you? Mum, there's no point. Honest. It's too late. Oh, this whole year's been an absolute disaster. Yes. Well, what are you going to do? You can't be a model all your life. I don't want to. I don't want to be a model at all. But I thought you enjoyed it. You were getting a lot of work, weren't you? Is something wrong with the model agency? Chelsea, we have to keep talking to each other. All right. So you're leaving school? You don't mind? Of course I mind. I think it's terrible. But there's no point in wasting time if you're not getting anything out of it. What you've got to decide is what you're going to do instead. I mean, have you thought of art school? I don't know, but I will, honestly. But you must. This isn't a holiday. You have got to think of something definite to do. Did your grandmother know you weren't going to school? No. Darling, is something wrong? No. Because if there is, we can sort it out as long as we keep talking. Why don't you get dressed and smarten yourself up? Then you can come into town with me and we can talk on the way. You can go to your grandmother's and pick up your things and I'll go and see Miss Brizzledon. You better hurry. I'll be no time at all. Love your mum. It's a man. No, it's a croissant. Where would you like it? On the couch. Sit him off. And anything else before the feast begins? Yes. Peel me another waiter. Ah, that comes with the coffee. First, the entree. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now there's been enough of that. What's wrong? It's Thursday. It's Thursday. I've heard some excuses in my time, but it's Thursday. Maxine's staff meeting. Ah, what's work? Let it wait. I'm only finishing off my piece about going up the Ganges. Very ordinary. Did you like India? Very much. You'd hate it. I might not. I could just see us sipping gin under mosquito nets, haggling in the markets. We should do it. Let's just take off and... I'm sorry. I've got such a big mouth. No, it's a great idea. I just don't think I could stand another leech sliding up my trouser leg. <laughs> Do they have leeches in the Ganges? Only on Thursdays. <laughs> Grandmother, you look wonderful. 
doing? What's she doing, Rex? But, uh, you know, I always knew you'd be a marvellous dancer. What are you after now? I wake up full of the joy of living and you accuse me of some ulterior motive. <laughs> well, at least you've cheered up. Now I've had enough of being grim. I've made a great discovery. There is no such thing as a free lunch. How's that? And that's it? The big discovery? Sure. As from today, I'm a new man. The time will come you'll be boasting about my achievements. Well, don't hold your breath. Uh, Mr. Quinn to see you, Mrs. Redburn. Oh, thank you, Rita. Show him in. Rex, don't. Who, me? What? <laughs> ah, James, nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Not at all. Morning, Rex. How are you? Fantastic. And congratulations on your appointment. Well done. Thank you. Not at all. The very best of luck. You're going to need it. Well, he's full of bounce today, isn't he? <laughs> Provinces. Really good. I had a marvellous time. I think I'll find another grower down there. That Pinot Noir in there is off his vines and it's not too bad. So, everything all right here? How's Kim? No trouble, I hope. No, no, no problem. I've never any problem. Hello, darling. You haven't been making a nuisance of yourself, have you? Probably, but nobody complained. <laughs> well, it's good to be back. Oh, I missed you. Can Auckland cope with the Commonwealth Games and then further on still is a two-parter on local government, which should be very good. And then Sean's got something on plastic surgery. That's about it. I didn't realise we were on glide time. Sorry, Maxine. My apologies, everyone. And mine. Traffic. <laughs> Did you say traffic or terrific? Who cares either way? Can we continue? Sorry. Oh, please, go ahead. I want to say thank you to everyone for coping so well during my absence last week. Particularly you, Magda, for taking over the reins at short notice. But how you managed it on these hours, I'll never know. However, I won't be disappearing again, and by the look of this slot, I really can't afford to. Opera Star returns, local government funding the games. Again. Boring. That's not gloss. It's like some suburban throwaway. Now, surely someone's got some good ideas. Sean, what about your plastic surgeon story? It's a bit early yet. I haven't got any uh, hard evidence. Uh, there's one joker, though. He seems to have more than his fair share of cock-ups, a uh, Dr. Chinnery. Well, wasn't he involved in an inquiry a few years back? Incompetent plastic surgeons. Oh, that's all the girl needs. Uh, he was clear to that. But uh, weren't there some more cases? Mm, I've heard of him. No, so far there's just been a lot of talk. But is there enough for a story? Oh, I think so. Yes. That's more like it. Right, we'll move it forward an issue and we'll put local government back. Ah, oh, there's quite a lot of legwork to do. They look fairly sturdy to me. Well, I've got some contacts around there. Perhaps I could help with the research. No, I'd rather you spend your time finding some interesting stories, Magda. Unless Sean has a problem with that. No problem. Good. Now, what else have we got? I've managed to disassociate the company from Phoenix's operations. So we're getting back on an even keel again. Good. One of the main things, of course, has been the marvellous job Brad did of setting up the float and managing the company in the first place. I think we'll see a pretty steady recovery from now on. Well, steady is the word. This family's been through enough lately. Caro's baby is due soon, and we don't want any more shocks. Of course, Mrs. Redfern. Your peace of mind is important to me, too. That doesn't mean I want to be protected from the truth. I want to be kept informed. Certainly. I'll meet with you regularly. And you know you can always get in touch with me if there's anything urgent you need to discuss. That means both of you, of course. Oh. Hey. Hi. I have to go into town. Anything you want? A new machine. Might be a bit of a squeeze getting it into the Porsche. <laughs> Listen, Sophie, um... See if Stan can give you a hand, huh? You all right? Yeah, yeah, just a little preoccupied with the deal I've been working on. You could always try giving it a pump, you know. Ah! 
You're so clever. <laughs> what are we doing in town? We are not doing anything. I'm going to a meeting. Sounds fine. A business meeting. That's OK. I don't mind waiting. I'll go shopping. Kimberly, I'm not taking you into town. Why? Going off me? Couldn't leave me alone a while ago. Cut this out, will you? We agreed. It happened, it was nice, but now it's over. Forget it, okay? Don't be too long, will you? I wouldn't want to get bored. I don't want you to feel tied to my apron strings, James, but I do want to be informed about crises before they happen and not after. That way, we may be able to do something about them. Well, of course, Mrs. Redfern. I understand. Good. Well, thank you for coming, James. Goodbye. Goodbye. She certainly likes to keep involved, doesn't she? Oh, yes. She's the last of the great matriarchs. I thought you handled her very tactfully. I like her. Well... <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I just remembered. I meant to bring some documents about Chelsea's trust. Not urgent, but they need to be done. Perhaps I could drop them off on the way home from the office tonight. Would that be all right? It's very good of you. Tonight will be fine. I look forward to it. Hmm. Can't you find anything to do? Out here? I'd have to be a genius. You don't have to be a genius to put this away. On that shelf there. Pass me the 1987 one. Thank you. I suppose it's not so boring when Alistair's here. Unless he's sulking. That's pretty boring. Oh, but then I suppose you'd know about that. Has he asked you to marry him? We understand each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just, you know what he's like. I bet it's that rich bitch mother of his. I bet she babies him like mad. Because, you know, he's really immature in some ways. I don't think you've known him long enough to talk like that, have you? I don't need to. Sydney's full of guys like him. They think all they have to do is snap their fingers and they'll be deafened by the sound of the knickers hitting the floor. Don't be vulgar. Well, it's true. And if they don't get what they want, they sulk. And like I said, it's really boring. What do you mean? Think about it. I'm going for a walk. Here. I hate office work. Kimberly. Well, Mother, you were away for a long time. Must have been all of three days. Plenty of time to get the sulks. But who's going to try a wine they've never heard of at the kinds of prices I have to charge? Don't worry. This label's going to come up very quickly. And there's no problem with supply. With the amount we've got salad, we can keep it rolling. It's all true. It's destined to be very big. And I can personally recommend the management. Seriously, this is a label you're going to see a lot of. OK. Bring me a selection. I guess I can only try them. <laughs> Thanks, I will. You won't be disappointed. I'll see you around. In the house. Thank you. He uh, owes you money or something. Just good friends. Always pays to know the owner. You should know that. So, why are you spending your time trying to flog a few measly bottles of wine nobody's ever heard of? It's my business. That's what I said. Why? When you could own the place. Hottest bar in town. I know what it is. What makes you think I want to buy it? Because it's better than staring out the window wondering if the rain's going to ruin your grapes. <laughs> Don't say a word. Just think about it. And remember, I know the owner. Always a trier, aren't you, Rex? Always. Kimberly! I want to know what you're trying to do. I'm not trying to do anything. You're wasting your breath anyway, because I don't believe you. That's up to you. Oh, I'm quite sure you tried it. But I'm equally sure Alistair wouldn't have had anything to do with it. <laughs> Are you kidding? He's the easiest lay I ever met. You would expect me to believe he's that stupid. Or that callous. 
What's wrong with you, Kimberly? Why do you keep trying to hurt me like this? I don't see what you have to get so upset about. He's not even very good. Stop it. Now, you've been blaming me for something for the past five years, ever since your father and I broke up. Is that it? Was that supposed to be my fault, was it? Well, it wasn't, and I will not be blamed for it. If you must know, it's trying to stop you making a fool of yourself. Have you any idea what you look like, drooling over a man half your age? How do you think I feel, watching my mother with the hots for a man young enough to be her own son? How dare you? You come in here behaving like a slut. At least I'm a young slut. I should be sorry I did that, but I'm not. Oh, I thought he was jumping Jack Flash when it comes to verifying credentials, and your name just popped into my head. Yeah, any time. Yeah, his name's Chinnery, Dr. Cyril John. Look, he's got quite a list of letters after his name, too, so I want you to check the lot of them. Yeah, Doctor of Medicine for a start, and that's uh, Otago. Honestly, you two. How can a girl work with that going on all day? Patience, Jasmine, your day will come. Well, Sean, I wouldn't mind either. Jasmine, don't you think he's scrumptious? I think they make a nice couple. Mm. Anyway, I don't mind. I've met this gorgeous guy. Mm -hmm. His name's Felix, and he's really rich. <laughs> anyway, you'll get to meet him, because this one's real. Oh, fantastic. Where'd you find him? At the agency, of course. I told you that's the only place I get to meet nice men. Look, of course it's impossible. I wouldn't have asked you to be been easy. Yeah, great. Hey, and thanks. What are you doing for lunch? I was going to have a sandwich here. Why? Can we go somewhere, just us? I want to talk. Oh, we can talk here. They've all gone. No. Somewhere out of the office. Mm. Sounds mysterious. Please, Jasmine. It's important. <laughs> OK. Hey, what's wrong? Nothing. Come on, of course there is. No, what is it? It's not your concern. It's just. Well, just what? It's Kimberly. Oh, yes. We had a row. Mm hmm. Well, maybe you should know. After all, it's family. Sure. <clears throat> Let's have it. There's been some sort of battle between us ever since I left Carl. I don't know, she, she thinks it's all my fault. She, she keeps trying to hurt me. She's making all sorts of ludicrous claims about... About what? About you and her. She says, no, it doesn't matter, it's nonsense. What sort of things? Stupid things, ridiculous things. She says she seduced you. Or you seduced her or something. What's she talking about? I mean, what am I supposed to say? It's all right, no. No, you don't have to say anything. I know you'd never, ever do anything like that. It's just something between me and Kimberly. So, how was your day in town? It was fine. It was good. You shouldn't have let her push you into it like that. It wouldn't have made any difference if it had waited till the next issue. Well, will you stop talking shop? I'm not. But you'll be under enormous pressure to get that story out on time. I thought you wanted to work at your own pace. Well, I just made my pace a little faster. Now, if you don't stop talking shop, I'll... What? Kiss you. Shop, 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 shop. This isn't still because it's Thursday, is it? No. I must stop ravishing men in public. It's indecorous. Yeah, you're right. I'm shocked. It's a terrible way to behave. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am. Kiss me again. <laughs> How dare you? Come on, I've got to get back. I've got a call coming up. Oh, don't be boring. Well, I have. Come on, I'll race you to the car. I'm not running anywhere in this frock. Come on. Oh, I am. My own face. Sean? 
honestly, he just came in the door and he was awful. And he started calling me names. I mean, really dirty stuff. He was such a creep. I was expecting someone nice, someone like Tony. But all this guy wanted to do was pull my clothes off. Mm, that's awful. What did you do? He didn't knock you around, did he? No. No, I took off. But that's not the point. I went to see Celia and Hugo and I said I was going to the police about the whole thing. Oh, the cops can't help. He'll just say he didn't do anything. Not that. You haven't worked it out yet, have you, Jasmine? The agency's an escort business. No, it's not. It's the rag trade. A few clients who just want a bit of company. You don't have to do anything. It's just a nice way of meeting some men. Celia as good as called me a whore. Oh. That's dreadful. Why? It's not as though we get paid or anything. <gasps> she gave me that the other day, after I spent the night with Tony. <laughs> yeah, but th that's just a bonus. A gift. It's not because of what you did. That's your business. Have you ever been given any money? Sure. But I bring them lots of work. I don't. So why are they giving money to me? You're Maxine Redfern's daughter, aren't you? So? So it's smart to be nice to you. Look, Chelsea, I'm not a prostitute. You can call yourself that if you like, but not me. Jasmine, I just want you to think about it. Please. Uh, excuse me, can I help? No, I'm doing fine, thanks. <sighs> you can't. That's confidential. It's all right. I'm family. Just popping in to see Maxine. Hasn't anyone told you you don't work here anymore? Why don't you try the Department of Labor? Why do you always attack me? I was just passing and thought I'll pop in and congratulate Maxine on a wonderful success. Now, what could be nicer than that? You, leaving. So if there's any point to this, get to it and then go. Or better still, just go. Oh, there's a point, all right. I have a story I just know you'll want to buy. Being family and all. Won't make any difference, Rex. I'll judge your story on the same basis as any other journalist. Quality. Oh, this is definite quality. It's about a model agency that doubles as a prostitution ring. Sound glossy enough? Go on. Well, I thought to give it that personal angle. Oh, by the way, it's all been fully researched. Dates, places, names, times, the lot. Anyway, I thought I'd swing it on one of the girls. Bright, attractive, everything going for her. But a pathetic case, really. You know the type, poor little rich girl. Parents divorced. Father brutally murdered by mother's lover. Oh, mother, by the way, runs a publishing empire. Get out. What's the matter? I haven't finished yet. Oh, yes, you have. Get out! What, not gloss material? Perhaps I should take it down the road. Take it down the road. And if you find someone foolish enough to publish it, I'll sue them right out of business. Don't you think you should check it out first? I don't need to. I know my daughter and I know you. Get out of my office! Take it easy. We don't want bloodstains on the new decor. Oh, and one more thing. After you check it out, because I know you're going to, just remember who gave you the story. That's right, gave. I don't want a cent. Just seeing your face is enough. You have a nice day now. Is the pain gone? Yeah, I'm okay. You'll come again, though, won't you? No, who knows? You know, you go along for a little while, nothing happens, then bang. You should see a doctor. Mm, maybe. Ugh. Later. Come on. Sean? Later, okay? Right now I've got work to do. I've got a call coming in. I'll take the call. You go to a doctor. Magda, please, I don't want to fight with you. I know what the doctor's going to say. What's the point? The point is me, because I don't know what he's going to say. Please, for me, will you? Okay. And they're right. I can't go to the police because I just get myself into trouble. That got us, Jasmine. 
We're hooked. Oh, I'm so sorry, Chelsea. I guess I put you wrong. I feel so stupid. What are we going to do? Are you sure about not going to the police? Yes. We've got to keep away from the agency. Have nothing more to do with it. But we can go to the occasional party. <gasps> no, nothing. We've got to make a complete break. Oh, God. What if Maxine finds out? What will she think? She doesn't know and she's not going to. It's finished. Right. Gosh, I was lucky, though. Why? Meeting Felix. Only just in time. What the hell do you think you're doing? What do you mean? You know damn well what I mean. You told her about us, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play your little games with me, Kimberly. I'm a big boy now. We had an agreement. As soon as she came back, it was over. What happened between you and me had absolutely nothing to do with Sophie. Nothing at all. I hope you've got a good reason for dragging me down here, Rex, because I don't have time for chatty drinkies in the middle of the day, particularly with you. Some of us have to work for a living. Nobody said you had to drink. Fine, so why am I here? Money? Make mine a G&T. Ever heard of a man called Cyril John Chinnery? Dr. Cyril John Chinnery. Tweak and Tuck Merchant, the scalpel for hire, that the one? The very man. Great, so tell me about the money. Chelsea, wait in my office, please. I want to talk to you. Jasmine, come here, please. Well? Are there any Scott Buchanan models in that lot? Oh, yes, lots. They're very good. Cancel them. And don't use models from that agency again. Ever. Do you understand me, Jasmine? Good. I've uh, just received a visit from that slime ball that we laughingly call your cousin. He wanted to pass on a particularly nasty piece of gossip he'd overheard in one of the sewers he frequents. It concerns the Scott Buchanan agency. Can you guess what it is? No. He said that Scott Buchanan's is a front for a call girl racket. He said that you were involved. Is it true, Chelsea? No. No! Not like that! I'm not... I just wanted to have some fun. I didn't know. I didn't think there was anything wrong. You were so tied up with Aaron and went... When Dad died... You must have known what you were doing. You didn't care about me. You didn't even care about Dad. All you cared about was Aaron. I thought you understood. They were the only ones who were nice to me. I was all on my own. Not to take money it for wasn't it. wasn't like that. I didn't know. Anyway, it stopped. I've finished. I've just spent the whole lunch out. Jasmine. She's in it too, isn't she? She didn't even realise. Chelsea. You are a stupid girl. But we've both stopped it. We're not going back anymore. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Now, tell me all about it. And tell me about Celia and Hugo, too. It must be marvellous sharing your job with your man. I wouldn't know, Shirley. Especially on investigating stuff, like two detectives. You could talk about it in bed. Detectives don't go to bed together. Pass me the scissors, will you? Yes, but you know what I mean. Sort of marriage of two minds. Will you answer the telephone or something? I'm busy. You're only cut string and I only want to chat. Well, go and check with your typewriter. Oh, I can't do this here. You... You all right? I am perfect. Now, will you please leave me alone? Mm, pardon me for living. 
When I said I was going to the police, she just laughed at me, and Hugo said that they wouldn't believe me. It'd be their word against mine. I wouldn't be able to prove anything. I'd just cause a scandal. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to talk to you last night, but I just couldn't. Chelsea, you've been very, very silly. But at least you know you have. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I know. You better get home and I'll see you tonight. All right, I'll, um, I'll go get my stuff from Olivia's. Chelsea, I understand how you got into this. I hate thinking about it. I hate thinking about all the awful things that have happened to this family lately. But I want you to know I've always believed in you. And I always will. <laughs> oh, Mum. <laughs> You don't deserve this, Sophie. And I'm sorry, I never wanted to hurt you. Then why did you? <sighs> I wish I knew. Because I'm stupid, hopeless. Oh, yes, yes, you've told me all this before because of your father. I know, yes. I suppose she seduced you, did she? Yes, of course. And what does it matter who seduced who? It, it happened. I wish to God it hadn't, but it did, and I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Sophie, for God's sake. Do you think I'm proud of myself? It was a stupid, selfish thing to do. Don't ask me what I thought I was doing. You love me, Alistair. Yes, of course I do. You know I do. No. I mean, really, love me. Yes. Because what's happened between us has been very special for me. And I don't think I could bear it if I thought it wasn't real. I do love you, Sophie. You know I do. Oh, that's really sweet, you know? Like babes in the wood. No. I suppose I get chucked out, do I? Yes. I think you better pack your bags and go back to Sydney, Kimberly. First flight out, you've got your ticket. Now, I I'm not cutting you off. So right now, I'd be just as happy if I never saw you again. I'm not going to risk my chance of a new life for you. I'm sorry, I will not do that, Kimberly. I want you to go. You think I'm just a cheap little slut, don't you? Well, I think you should know, Mother Dearest. Compared to lover boy, I'm the Virgin Mary. Don't you think you're being a bit hard on her? I'm just as responsible as she is. I had to make a choice. And for better or worse, I chose you. Sean, message for you. Doctor. More tests, it'll be a few days. But surely they've got some idea. Well, they're pretty sure it's not wind. Got a call to make. Oh, you really will have to keep your mind more on the job, Magda. You appear to have been a touch distracted when you put this issue together. That's all I need. You dumped the job in my lap, you never here to consult, and now you've got the nerve to question my professional judgment. Well, I realise it was short notice, but you're the assistant editor, and this was a job you were asked to do. I'm simply telling you what I think. Yes, but you don't like it. All that means is you didn't do it. No, it means that this issue doesn't come up to the standard that I think Gloss Magazine should be. It's neither better nor worse, it's just different. And if you were mature enough to appreciate that fact, you might find life a little bit more livable. Certainly your staff would. I think we better talk later, Magda, when you can take things a little less personally. Fine. Any time you like.
You don't think you should leave a toothbrush, just in case? No, I don't. I've thought the whole thing out and I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Good. How's school? Ouch. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't I have asked? Yes. School's out for good. Really? And with full parental approval. It seemed... well, things have been so chaotic recently. I'm sorry, Rita. Did you want something? <laughs> I'll finish now, if that's everything. Yes, it is, Rita. Thank you. Good. I'll see you in the morning, then. Goodbye. I've always wondered where she spends her nights off. I don't know. Maybe she's got a tall, dark, handsome <laughs> lover somewhere. Poor thing. Who, him or Rita? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I behaved so badly while I was here. I didn't know what I was doing. I made an awful mess of everything. I suppose I've upset Grandma. Nobody's upset. It's all right. We know it's been a difficult time for you. But it sounds as though things are coming right again with Maxine. Yes, fine. Mum and I are really close now. Good. I'm pleased. And don't you worry about your grandmother. She understands more than you think. Why doesn't somebody tell a joke? Come on, Stan. You must be the life of the party down at the Delhi Club on a Friday night. Why don't you tell us a story? It doesn't even have to be in English. Just tap your foot on the punchline so I know when to laugh. OK, that's it. Down tool, stop work, everybody out. What's going on? We're going out on strike. Go on, Stan, take the rest of the day off. Sophie and I are going into town. I had enough of the country for one day. Yeah, all right, Stan, you can, you can knock off now. <sighs> and I've just about had enough of him, Don't too. Don't worry about him. So where are we going? Into town. Get out your glad rags and dust off your dancing shoes, girl. We are going to hit the high spots. Dancing? Champagne? The works. Just the two of us? Just you and me. We won't even talk to the waiters. Only sign language. <laughs> <laughs> and this. We are... Oh, no. I haven't got time. Darren's got baseball tonight, would you believe? And I'm already running late. No, don't answer it. Pretend you left at the proper time. I'll sing to No, I can't. See? They just gave up. Wow. Now, that's a real skill. Good night. Night, Magda. Good night. Hey, tell that Darren to hit a home run for me. How do you do it? What? Just carry on. I don't get used to it. Carrying on, I mean. Hey, you know, on some jobs, Chinnery's time works out at about a thousand bucks an hour. Will you have dinner with me? OK. Working late? No, we're just going. Now, sir. Now. Good. Bye. Ever felt unwanted? Yes. Hey, it's being serious, not allowed. Now, are you coming? I'm hungry. Are you feeling particularly devout this evening, my dear? <laughs> not specially. I'm looking for names for the baby. Oh, good. I'm glad. Something Brad and I used to often talk about. And, well, I've been putting it off. Now, for some reason, I want to. Well, that's wonderful. It seems a bit silly, really. I mean, I'll probably call it Bradley anyway. Ah, so it's going to be a boy? I don't know. I just have <laughs> a feeling it might. Or a girl. Well, there are only two choices. At least there used to be. Talking of girls, I better be on my way. My bridge girls get so titchy if we're late. Good night, my dear. Good night. You'll never beat the booze propping this up every night, Alec. Time to get out. Cash up and go and enjoy that place in Tarpa. you a nice life, all right. But only a batch. Go on, sell this place and you can live how you like. Every day up to your neck in cold water with a hip flask and a fly rod, you'll be happier than a monkey up a tree. You don't give up, do you, Rex? Well, I'm looking after you. And speaking of the breeze, look what just blew in the door. See ya. Look after me, all right? Good, your loins. Here comes everybody's favorite sleaze bag. Hello, Rex. What an unexpected surprise. Must be your lucky night. I'm even going to buy you a drink. Oh, charming. And I really am paying. On my tab. Well, just a quick one. We have a date tonight. Oh, that's sweet. But a 
isn't it just possible the test might show it's not a relapse? No. How can you be so sure? Surely there's a chance. There's no chance. I know what it is. The tests are just a formality. Oh, yes, of course. To mollify me, is that it? You're not interested, are you? Not really. How can you say that? You've just given up, haven't you? If you like. You have no right. It's... it's not natural. You have to try. Try what? They've tried everything they've got. Now it's done all over again. But surely you want to keep living. Why? Oh, Sean, stop this. You... you've got to want to live because I want you to. Because I love you. Doesn't that mean anything? Well, to me, it means plenty. To my disease, it means nothing. I don't want you to leave me. Celia, it's been such a long time, and you know you haven't changed a bit. Oh, neither of you, Maxine. And I'm surprised we don't run into each other more often. After all, we're in similar lines of business. Do you think so? Well, Gloss is a top magazine, and Scott Buchanan's is a top agency. I must say I'm curious as to why you've cancelled the girls for next week's shoot. I'm glad you mentioned that. You see, I've instructed my lawyer not to go to the police so long as you've closed the agency and you're out of town by the end of the week. What are you talking about? The Scott Buchanan Escort Agency. You very foolishly included my daughter in your nasty little games and she's told me all about it. I don't know what she said, but my agency is a perfectly respectable oh, business. Celia, you don't have time to play games. I have the evidence. You'll never be able to prove a thing. And even if you could, you wouldn't dare use it. I use it, all right. Well, go ahead. You'll hurt yourself more than you would us. What we've got on Little Goody Two Shoes, the papers that have a field day. The great red fern call girl scandal. It'll run for weeks. And you wouldn't like that, would you, Maxine? You see, just for once, you haven't got the whip hand. I don't think I've made myself understood. I intend to put you two out of business and out of town, whatever it costs. I'll even put Chelsea on the witness stand if I have to. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? You're letting yourself in for a lot of pain, lady. I've got thick skin. I can afford to send Chelsea to a finishing school until it all blows over if I have to. We'll survive. But you two, it's going to cost you a lot of money, I promise. You might even go to jail. So it's up to you. Come on. No. She's bluffing. Am I? Your own daughter. Shut up, Celia, and come on. Celia, you just received some very good advice. You always did have a vicious streak, Maxine. Oh, by the way, the end of the week means Friday, not Sunday. Bye. How are you? So many old faces. Well, there's not a lot happens in this town doesn't pass through this place in one shape or another. Like that. That'd be a shape you'd know. Oh, my God. Hello, Nicky. Mm -hmm. Stranger, how dare you come sneaking in here without telling anyone? Where have you been? I've missed you. Yeah, I've missed you too, sweetheart. I'm over in that corner. So why don't you come and join us for a drink? Oh, no, we're not staying. Next time. Promise. I know your promises, Alistair Redfern. I'll see you later. Mm. Bye, Rex. She doesn't change, does she? Oh. <sighs> Can't complain about the service. So how you been, Rex? Been buying up any new companies lately? It's only natural when you love someone to want some sort of a future. It's just hard coming to terms with someone who doesn't even want to hope. How are you going to better go? You can't. You can't just walk away. You've got to face it. I've faced this thing for longer than you know. Faced it, and until I met you, beaten it. Can't you see I'm a million light years ahead of you? I've done all that radiotherapy, chemotherapy, the diets. And it still keeps coming back. And there's not going to be a remission for me, no miracle cure. So how do you face that? You say, OK, if it has to happen, at least it'll be my way, my place, my time. I'll choose. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, I've got myself a little bolt hole to crawl into. 
I've even got myself a stack of morphine so I don't scream too loud. I'm sorry. You know, I was ready. Not happy, but ready. Until I met you. I didn't want to fall in love with you, Magda, but I have. Do you think I don't want hope? Of course I do. But it's the one thing I mustn't do. So please don't ask me, all right? It does seem such a cheat. It is a cheat. See the same old owner still hanging around? What's the matter, Rex? Losing your grip. I thought you'd have this place bought and sold a dozen times by now. Can't you find a buyer? I don't think I found a buyer, all right. I've just been working on the deal a little. Doing what? Would you believe knocking nearly 20% off the price and getting an option? Now all I need's a partner. So what do you reckon, Al? <laughs> I've never really seen you as a country boy. Yeah. 